Hello, everyone. Today we are going to be talking about troubled times. And we certainly have had plenty of uh, troubled times in the past few years. Um, so we know what that's like, but there's always trouble in any times. And there's no time that is an easy time to live. And that's what we're going to be reading about today. Um, in today's story, the disciples have been with Jesus for quite a while by now. They've heard him teach. They've watched him heal people. They've even done some healing themselves as they traveled through villages to reach people who weren't able to get to Jesus. And life wasn't easy for them. They didn't have a lot to eat. They moved around a lot. And now I'm going to read to you, sorry, walk, read to you about what Jesus told them. And this is from Luke um, chapter 21, verses 5 through 19. Some people were talking about the temple, how it was decorated with beautiful stones and ornaments dedicated to God. Jesus said, as for the things you are admiring, the time is coming when not even one stone will be left upon another. All will be demolished. They asked him, teacher, when will these things happen? What sign will show that these things are about to happen? Jesus said, watch out that you aren't deceived. Many will come in my name saying, I'm the one and it's time. Don't follow them. When you hear of wars and rebellions, don't be alarmed. These things must happen first, but the end won't happen immediately. Then Jesus said to them, nations and kingdoms will fight against each other. There will be great earthquakes and wide-scale food shortages and epidemics. There will also be terrifying sights and great signs in the sky. So this doesn't sound, sound very good, does it? This is what Jesus is telling disciples that all these horrible things are going to happen. But then this is what he says next. But before all this occurs, they will take you into custody and harass you because of your faith. They will hand you over to synagogues and prisons, and you will be brought before kings and governors because of my name. This will provide you with an opportunity to testify. Make up your minds not to prepare your defense in advance. I'll give you words and wisdom that none of your opponents will be able to counter or contradict. You will be betrayed by your parents, brothers and sisters, relatives and friends. They will execute some of you. Everyone will hate you because of my name. Still, not a hair in your head will be lost. By holding fast, you will gain your lives. So what he's talking about here is um, saying that will be betrayed. Um, everyone, everyone will hate you because of my name. So they will be prosecuted because they... Um, because they're followers, followers of Jesus, what he's saying. But he says, if you hold fast to what you believe and trust me and, and let me help you with, with words that I can offer you, then you will gain your lives and you will survive and be okay in the end. So how do you think you might have felt if you were one of the disciples? It must have been a little, a little disheartening when Jesus starts listing all of these um, horrible things that are going to happen. But in the end, he says, stick with me, stay with me. And basically, I can help get you through and you will survive. So um, so he's offering them hope, even in spite of all these troubles. Second here. It's pretty about all weird. Um, so this passage reflects the kind of um, persecution and strength under persecution, which the early church was experiencing at the time when Luke, Luke's gospel was written. And today in modern times, we also live in a world that is full of troubles and can be hostile in general and hostile sometimes to us as individuals. So we need to hear this the way listeners at the time back in the day, and Luke's time would have heard it. If we're truly living the way that Jesus taught us, I mean, we can't expect everything to be easy. He said, it's gonna be all these bad things that are gonna happen. However, we don't have, the point is we don't have to face these difficulties alone. Um, Christ who was with the church from the very beginning will be with us too. So it's good to hear stories of how our ancestors and the early church experienced God support in times of trouble because sometimes it can face feel like we have hard times that we're facing facing them alone. 
But we know that back then they felt the same way and because they need to be reminded of the vision of the and they need to be reminded of the values that bring them together as a community. And while these um, assurances didn't manage the troubles, the troubles were still there, it made them easier to bear and they could survive just as like we have that faith today that allows us to survive. All right, I'm going to read you, read you a song. I'm not gonna sing you a song because this is not a song I can sing. It was written by um, Sam Cooke. And some of you more mature kids, I will say, may, you would, you know this song. I actually didn't recognize the lyrics, but as soon as I listened to it, I, I recognized it. Um, but some of you, some of you younger folks may not be familiar with the song. So I'm gonna put a link of the actual Sam Cooke song. Um, in the in with the YouTube description and in the Facebook posting so that you can listen to the song. I don't know how Joe manages to play music through Zoom. Whenever I try to do it on a separate device, a separate speaker, it still doesn't work for me very well. So I'll let you listen to it on your own. And for now, I will just read you the lyrics. And as I read them, think about what this has to do with the passage from Luke that I was reading you earlier. I was born by the river in a little tent. Oh, and just like the river, I've been running ever since. It's been a long, long time coming, but I know change is going to come. It's been too hard living, but I'm afraid to die because I don't know what's up there beyond the sky. It's been a long, long time coming, but I know change is going to come. I go to the movie and I go downtown. Somebody keep telling me I don't hang around. It's been a long, long time coming, but I know change is gonna come. Then I go to my brother and I say, brother, help me please. But he, he winds up knocking me back on my knees. There've been times that I thought I couldn't last for long, but now I think I'm able to carry on. It's been a long, long time coming, but I know change is gonna come. Oh yes, it will. So, I'm, I'm reading you this and suggesting you listen to this song because it's he's talking about how rough life is, right? And in this instance, he's referring um, very specifically to some of the troubles that was happening during the civil rights movement. And so this is um, a little bit of a theme there of, of freedom and fighting for freedom, right? Because he knows that's the, there's all these difficult times that they faced um, during segregation, et cetera. And he says, change is gonna come, and we're gonna get there. But if you listen to the, listen to the, when you listen to the um, Sam Cooke version, think about, listen to the words again, and Think it through and look for proof that change will come. Is there because it's not in there? There, there's never anywhere in those in those lyrics that he says, "Oh, I know it's going to become change is going to come because of this, this, and this." It's not there. It, there's no proof there. He knows change is going to come because he believes, because he has faith, and he is hopeful. So. Go listen to the song if you haven't heard it before. I'm happy that I've been able to introduce you to, or if you haven't heard of Sam Cooke, some of you kids may not have, then I'm happy to introduce you to Sam Cooke. And I hope you enjoy the song. And I'll see you next time. Bye.